cool so now let's uh, summarize what we have seen so let me redraw the yeah i can copy this so this is your five transistor ota right so if you remember the assumptions we started with were the following let me write them once again first we ignored the cgd that is the drain to gate capacitance here and then we further made an assumption that the load capacitance is much much greater than the other two capacitances and we assume that the poles are apart using that we computed the poles now to simplify the calculation of zeros what did i assume further are huh? not of the nmos i had ignored the moment i do that we saw this node voltage vx was zero in the differential mode okay this is in differential mode that needs to be clear we'll only focus on differential mode so we have two poles and one zero so let's try to write the pole locations again uh, we have only two poles due to c3 and cl and what is the pole due to cl what is the equivalent resistance seen yeah this is a uh, r not of the n in parallel with r not of the pmos so we'll simply write gds of the nmos plus gds of the pmos again this all are, these are all approximate should not be exact. i have the second pole due to c3 and what is the resistance looking here 1 by gm again this was short when you computed the pole due to c3 so looking here was just 1 by gm of the pmos so this is gmp by c3 and since vx is zero this capacitor plays no role and that was your unobservable and uncontrollable state and we had the zero calculated earlier which was 2 gmp by c3 we'll maybe copy this again and paste it so uh, this pole uh, is typically sometimes referred to as the mirror pole probably because it's coming due to the current mirror and if you look at these two you seem to have a pole at gmp by c3 but it is immediately followed by a zero at two times gmp by c3 right so the same capacitance here is contributing to both a pole and a zero at twice the frequency this is referred to as the pole zero doublet pole zero doublet these are all jargons for you to save in your mind anything more yeah and another jargon uh, is the following so here which is the low frequency pole p1 p2 p1 um, p1 or p2 p1 and the lowest frequency pole is typically referred to as the dominant pole have you heard this term before dominant pole why is it called dominant pole i mean the lowest frequency pole is typically called the dominant pole why is that so Mm -hmm. I mean, can you be more specific? I mean, how is it depending more on this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, tech, we have not defined anything with respect to unity gain frequency. I mean, see, let's say you have two poles in your system. Okay, so let's say one plus uh, s by p one, s by p two, right? And let us say p one is much much smaller than p two. the impulse response here will contain two exponentially decaying signals right so i am drawing two of them so one is decaying faster one is decaying slower so uh, do you think the lower frequency pole will decay faster or decay slower lower frequency pole will decay slower is it clear i mean it's a low frequency it's all going to be very slow 
so the decay is also slow so typically the final settling in your circuit will be dependent on this fellow so that is one reason why this is the dominant pole because that finally impacts your uh, final settling but whatever you guys mentioned are also same it's just the same thing so if this is called the dominant pole what will we call the high frequency pole as yeah that's all second standard english dominant non dominant so if i now try to sketch the magnitude response for this fellow that is gain as a function of frequency so this is a differential mode gain okay i mean th that's what you have computed this is differential mode gain so it will start from some value at dc it will start low and let's say it encounters the first pole p1 so what will happen once it encounters the first pole it is it will go down as minus 20 db per decade and let's say here is where it encounters the second pole it goes as minus 40 db per decade but immediately after the second pole you have a zero so let's say this is the zero so now it will so typically because of this we kind of approximate the characteristic as a first order characteristic like this the idea is again assuming that the uh, second pole is occurring at a higher frequency where the gain has sufficiently dropped down it's okay even and you also know that you have a zero immediately following it so instead of this exact characteristic you can say that it's just a first order characteristics it's a decent approximation okay. is this clear and as we'll see all our single stage vts we tend to approximate as a first order system like this any questions so far v out by vid correct this is a differential mode transfer function again the common mode transfer function the poles will be same obviously you try to find where the zeros will be right that is an xx you can work out yeah yeah everything will be left half of s plane i mean see if a pole is in the right half of s plane the circuit to start with is unstable right i mean typically the, i remember that it is 1 by rc right so only if r is negative we can have the pole to be in the rhp right right uh, huh. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they actually will be greater than this cx pole you are saying right that you can see this as we saw the pole location is what 2 gmn by cx right and this will be the lowest frequency pole so this will be much much higher this will come higher but uh, whether it is greater than p2 or smaller than p2 that depends 